Clear for Australia founder Will Shackle. Will, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I'm sure you're across this uh, situation and we've just, um, you know, reading the front page of The Australian this morning where the Energy Minister Chris Bowen says Australia is not signing this agreement as we do not have a nuclear energy industry. Nuclear power is outlawed in Australia. What are your thoughts on this particular topic? Well, I just think it's ironic that the climate change minister has flown all the way to Azerbaijan to undermine climate action. There is no reason why our scientists, our engineers can't be involved in advancing nuclear technology for the world's benefit. We're already involved in the Gen 4 International Forum advancing uh, modern nuclear reactors, and there's no reason why we wouldn't, shouldn't be involved in helping the rest of the world benefit from them at very least. I think what this underscores is that, is that Australia's nuclear ban is holding us back. It must be lifted immediately because it means that we're restricting ourselves from a genuine climate solution, one that has been recognised around the world. Janie, at COP29, COP29 at the moment, 31 countries have signed a pledge to triple nuclear capacity by 2050. The US recently announced that they're going to uh, plan to build 200 gigawatts of new nuclear by 2050. The rest of the world gets it. Nuclear is a climate solution, but back in Australia, we can't get past the Simpsons. We're still stuck with ideolo ideology and politics, and ultimately that's holding us back. And, I mean, we've got to look at the end game, don't we? Uh, I mean, climate, there's a lot of people that say uh, it's not real. There's extreme views on either side, perhaps, is what we're hearing. Uh, we did hear that uh, that because the world was the hottest on record globally last year and there's a 48% chance of average global temperatures to rise to 1.5% for the next five years between 2022 to 26. So some people are saying it's a, a you know a real crisis and we've only got a number of years to to get our emissions down i guess what the other argument would be will is uh, for australia if we were to have renewables uh, sorry nuclear is that going to take 7 to 9 years at a minimum well, look, I think the issue is the, the time that it will take to reach the alternative. And unfortunately, no country has 100% solar and wind. So we don't know how long it will take for us to realise if that is even possible. So you compare it to nuclear. Uh, the UAE was able to build nuclear from scratch in a little over a decade. Uh, Jacopo from MIT recently came out and told the nuclear inquiry that it would take Australia around 12 years to have nuclear in our grid, considering we already have a regulator, we already have experience with our research reactor 30 kilometres away from the Sydney CBD at Lucas Heights. So Australia's not starting from scratch. And I think the important thing is that nuclear is proven, unlike our 100% solar and wind plan. So I'm not concerned from that standpoint. I'm concerned about how long it will take to reach 100% solar and wind, uh, given it's never been done before. We had our documentary from Chris Yulman here at Sky News last night called The Real Cost of Net Zero. Did you uh, have a look at it? And uh, what are your thoughts, especially with the price of uh, transitioning to renewables? Because, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter uh, what transition it is going to be, whether it's nuclear, renewables, certainly we, we would anticipate a cost, but um, what did you make of it? Well, look, I think it just shows that the energy transition is much more complex than it's been painted to be. We often hear rhetoric from, you know, the Minister for Climate Change and Energy that renewables will bring down power bills, that we're blessed with them, uh, and that we should just put every all of our effort into them and all of our problems would be solved. The reality is that we've got a climate, energy and cost of living crisis, and even though we're investing more in renewables than we ever have, none of those issues are getting any better. So I think that it was an excellent documentary. I really enjoyed watching it. I think it provides a lot of honesty now to the debate. I was really pleased to see nuclear mentioned at the end. Uh, Chris Yulman visited the Vogel nuclear plant, uh, a facility that I've also had the honour of being able to visit. And I think hopefully this is going to show Australians that we need to be considering all options. That's certainly a point that he underscored. Uh, but I think hopefully that's a point that, you know, if our politicians were watching that, episode last evening that they are also received from that and hopefully it encourages them to lift the ban on nuclear energy because it's something the rest of the world's doing and it's something that Australia needs to be doing desperately.
AMO last month acknowledged that Senate estimates there's no guarantee the Albanese's race to renewables um, is going to lower the uh, household bill. So do you think we're being deceived here by the government in terms of power bills going down? I think we are, and a lot of what Chris Bowen says directly contradicts what AEMO is saying. I think there's a lot of concern currently with the current approach. Like I said, it's never been done around the world. Not probably getting the consequences. It's not a surprise that Australia is the only member of the G20 with a ban on nuclear energy. We we tell the rest of the world from you know our leaders, our politicians say that nuclear is unviable, that it's the most expensive form of energy. There's a reason why that's only being said in Australia. If it doesn't apparently stack up in Australia, why does it stack up all around the world? Why are 50 countries looking to nuclear energy for the first time? Either they are all stupid or there's something wrong with our logic back in Australia. So I think that you know, we just need to listen to the facts. We need to look at what the rest of the world is doing and have serious reflection because there, there's a reason why they're all committing to nuclear at the moment. It certainly is a divisive topic. Will, we've got to wrap it up, but thank you as always. Great to see you. Thank you.